Hey, I'm Josh. I've been working on a game lately called Mansion in the Unity game engine, and for this game I wrote a Unity plugin in Rust that generates meshes in real time for every light on the screen. I developed my lighting system on Linux, and Rust made it extremely easy to port it to Windows, so I imagine the same will apply for macOS as well. I will assume that you have the latest versions of Unity and Rust installed already, and will assume that you already know how to use both of them at least a little. Let's begin! I like to make a folder called working in the root of my Unity projects. In there, I will create the Rust mesh generation code. Open a command line and type cargo init rust mesh gen minus minus lib to create a new Rust library project. Go into the project folder and open cargo.toml in a text editor and add these lines of code. This will tell the compiler to generate a dynamic library that can be copied into our Unity project. In the dependencies section, add cgmath equals 0.17.0. That's the current version as of writing this tutorial. This gives us vector and matrix types that also happen to be compatible with Unity in a lot of cases. Now open up the src slash lib.rs file. I'm just going to delete these unit tests so I have an empty file. First I'll import the vector3 type from cgmath. Then I'll create a struct called context that will represent all the state of our library. This is a lot nicer than using a bunch of global variables, and in Rust it's also easier. These fields will be the storage space for the vertices and triangles in our generated mesh. Vector3 of F32 has an identical representation to Unity's Vector3, and I32 is identical to c -sharp's int type, and I'll give it a basic constructor. Now we will write a function to generate a mesh. First we'll clear any vertices or triangles from previous calls to generate. At minimum, a mesh consists of a list of 3D vertex positions and a list of triangles to draw between three of those vertices at a time. I'll first add the 3D coordinates for the corners of a basic 2D plane or a square. Then add two triangles to fill that plane. These numbers are indices into the array of vertices, and the length of the triangles array must be a multiple of 3. You know, because you can't make a triangle out of anything other than 3 points. Make sure each triangle's points are in clockwise order. If they're in counterclockwise order, then with most materials, the triangle won't actually appear on the screen. Next, create some functions that can be called from c -sharp. The context new function will create a new instance of the context struct, and the Rust compiler will expose the boxed return value as a regular unmanaged pointer in C sharp. No mangle means that the name context new should be exposed exactly as written. The Rust compiler would usually mess with the function's name so that you can have two different functions both called context new in different files. But if we let the name be mangled, we won't know what function to call from our C-sharp code. Extern means that the function is compiled as if it were a function in a C library, and therefore can be called from C-sharp, because C-sharp supports calling C functions. Context free should be called to delete the context returned from context new. The Rust compiler rewraps the unmanaged pointer from c -sharp in the box, and if you understand Rust's destructors, you will know that the box will be destroyed when context free finishes running. Context generate simply calls the generate function we wrote earlier. All the functions that do things with our context instance can simply take the context as a reference in the first argument. A Rust reference in an external function will also look exactly like a regular unmanaged pointer from c -sharp. Now we just need a way to actually copy that data out of the context and into a mesh in Unity. I'll write a download mesh function where I can just pass in a couple of pointers to c -sharp arrays and the context data will be copied into them. Dereferencing a pointer in Rust is unsafe, so we will need an unsafe block. Then call the standard copy non-overlapping function to copy the data from our context vec buffers into the buffer pointers passed into the download mesh function. If we build this library and place it into a folder called plugins in our Unity project, we will be able to use it from c -sharp. First, create an empty plugins folder in your assets folder. If you are running Linux, write a simple script called buildandinstall.sh to build the Rust library, then copy it into the plugins folder. 
Note that library file names on Linux will always be prefixed with lib, but you will still refer to them in C Sharp by their name without the lib prefix or the .so suffix. Save the script in the Rust MeshGen folder. Then in the terminal run chmod plus x build and install.sh and run it. If you are on Windows, make a similar script called build and install.bat. Then you can just open a command prompt in the Rust Mesh Gen folder, then run this script by typing its name. On Windows, the library is only suffixed with .dll, but you still refer to it as just Rust Mesh Gen. This simplifies cross platform compatibility. If you're a MacOS user, you'll probably have to do something similar to the Linux instructions. Now in your Unity project, create a c -sharp script called rust-mesh-gen. I'll create a second class in this file called rust-mesh-gen-backend, which will wrap up all our ugly C interface code in a nice c -sharp interface. In here, we will create a mirror of the external interface we created in Rust. Write a static extern function for each extern function in Rust, and give each one the dll import rust-mesh-gen attribute so it knows which library to call the function on. Anytime we have pointers in our library interface, or in this case, boxes and references, same thing, it's easiest to use the int putter type, which is basically an anything pointer in C Sharp. You'll see here that I've got a bunch of errors because I still need to import system and system.runtime.interruptServices to be able to use the DLL import attribute and the int putter type. Now to write the nice c -sharp wrapper around these functions. Add a context pointer field to the class to keep the current instance of the context struct from Rust. Write a constructor that creates an instance of the context with context new and a dispose function to destroy it. Then write a simple wrapper for the generate function. The next one's trickier. I'll write a function called update mesh that will call the context download mesh function and do all the work required to get it into the mesh that we will pass in as an argument to the update mesh function. Okay, so we've already run into a problem. We have no idea how big the triangle and vertex arrays need to be, so we can't allocate them. Back in our Rust library, what I'll do is make the generate function call a callback function to inform the c -sharp library of how big the new meshes are. You might think, Josh, why on earth would you use a callback when you could just make extern functions that return the size of the vertex and triangle buffers? I'll tell you why. It's so that I can teach you how to use callbacks. Also, the lighting library I wrote for my game generated not one, but many meshes, and I use a callback to inform Unity that a light's mesh has changed and needs to be re-downloaded, or I don't call the callback at all if the light's mesh has not changed. So in our Rust library, I'll create a struct to send in our callbacks argument about how big it needs to allocate the vertex and triangle arrays before it calls the download mesh function. This repr c attribute tells the Rust compiler to do whatever c does. This is useful because we can also do the same thing in C-sharp, allowing this struct to be passed to C-sharp with no changes whatsoever. In the context struct, add an entry for the callback then construct it with a dummy function. In the generate function, call the callback with the vertex and triangle counts. To call a function stored in a struct in Rust, you have to put the function name in brackets. It's just a requirement. We then need to be able to set this callback to a C-sharp function. Note how we use the extern keyword on the callback argument so it can be loaded with a C-like function from C-sharp. If you are being observant and understand C callbacks, you might notice that we don't pass any context whatsoever into our callback function. There's only one argument. Yet, we need some context to be able to call a method on a specific instance of our Rust Mesh Gen backend class in C Sharp. As it turns out, C Sharp is actually magic and can create a brand new function for us to call for every instance of Rust Mesh Gen backend. That's one way to do it, I guess. In the Rust MeshGen backend class, make a replica of the change info struct. The order of the fields in this struct must match the struct in Rust exactly, but the names can be whatever you want. 
And struct layout sequential does the same thing as wrapper C in Rust, where it does whatever C does, which means this struct under the hood has exactly the same representation as the one in Rust. Then we'll add a description of our callback function. Behind the scenes, C sharp functions aren't called the same way as a C function, but we can force it to work that way by adding this line. Now we can write the library function description. Note that we have to add marshal as function pointer to make any function passed into that argument work like a C function. Create a placeholder for now to act as the callback. Then call the setter that we just created in the constructor. No wait, this is wrong. I learned the hard way that you can't just pass the function in like that. When you do this, a special object is implicitly created to manage that magic function, the one that I mentioned earlier. If you pass it straight into our library function, it will be garbage collected very soon after, and when onChanged is actually called, it will have no idea which instance of Rust Mesh Gen backend it is running on. To fix this, we just need to make sure that the callback doesn't get garbage collected. Make a member variable. Then instead of passing it directly, first assign it to the member. Now the callback will be alive as long as the Rust Mesh Gen backend instance is. Add another member to store the value passed into onChanged. Then in the onChanged function, assign current change info. Great, now we can finally get back to updating the mesh. In the update mesh function, we'll only do anything if the current change info is actually set. Then we'll allocate the vertex and triangle arrays with the reported size. This is just for demonstration purposes. In a real game, you should avoid reallocating these arrays if you don't need to. You can get a pointer to these C-sharp arrays using the fixed keyword, which also requires an unsafe block. Unity won't actually let you use the unsafe keyword unless you go into Edit, Project Settings, Player, Other Settings, Configuration, and check the Allow Unsafe Code box. You don't actually need unsafe here, but the safe alternative to getting a pointer to an array would require an allocation every time this function is called, which you should avoid if you can. So now these pointers are acquired, you can call download mesh. At this point, we already have the vertex and triangle data in our C sharp arrays, so all we need to do is load them into the mesh. And then we'll set current change info to null so that subsequent calls to this function don't do anything unless the generate function actually says something changed. The backend is now complete. Let's actually implement the Rust Mesh Gen component now. First, let's get the mesh filter component in the awake function and give it a new mesh. Since this mesh will change a lot, you should call mark dynamic to optimize it for frequent changes. Now create an instance of the backend and call dispose on it in the onDestroy function. Then we will use the update function to call generate and update mesh every frame. Now if we run our build and install script and restart Unity, we can add the Rust Mesh Gen component to a game object with a mesh filter and a mesh renderer, and the dynamic mesh will appear when we play the game. And behold, a square! And you can also see the two individual triangles by setting the scene view to wireframe mode. What if we wanted the mesh to change from frame to frame? Well, there's a ton of ways we could do this, but I'll give you an example. In the Rust library, add an f32 time argument to the context generate function and to the extern wrapper function and add a float time argument to the C-sharp end as well. And of course, pass in the current time. Then, in the generate implementation in Rust, we can modify the mesh based on our time input. And after running build and install, and restarting Unity, we have this glorious animated thing. And there we go, a working dynamic mesh in Unity generated by a Rust function. As you have already seen, I'm working on a game called Mansion, and you can see the devlog for that on this channel. That's all for now. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'm going to keep posting videos regularly, 
So please subscribe if you want to see more. And of course, like this video if you want to make me feel good.